video and I have got uh, the rarest guitar I've ever ever stopped at second note to show you. It is a 1987 PRS Custom 24 and you know at the time when this guitar came out PRS was around 18 months old so this is a, a super early PRS very likely that Paul Reed Smith himself would have done a lot of the work uh, on this guitar. So I think what I'll do is I'll go over sort of what I know about it um, and then we'll go into the sounds and then I think I'll come back and talk about, we'll go over the sort of paperwork it comes with because that's really, really cool to show you and just some of the other details as well. So PRS have never used the sort of traditional nitro uh, lacquer you get with say Fender or Gibson and this finish, given that it's, um, you know, 35, 36 years old, it is still very, very red and vibrant and looking, you know, looking really nice. This guitar has been used over its lifetime. You'll see certain little marks, uh, particularly on the back there as well, if I can show you. You know, you've got marks all around here sort of thing, but it's absolutely not been abused. It's just showing its age, I suppose. Um, we'll come back to the switching when we talk about the sounds, because that's one of the things that is different on a modern PRS. But shape-wise, you can see just how little it's changed over the years. Even like, you know, the bevel here is pretty much the same depth and angle. On this guitar, you have a Brazilian rosewood fingerboard, which just feels... Like, I love the feel of Brazilian rosewood. I know you can't use it anymore, but it feels, looks... Oh, it's just a great touch to see on a guitar. The neck on this is vastly different to any of the SE PRS's I've had in. This feels, you know, it's just, it's way more familiar. I wouldn't say it's quite Gibson-like, but it's very nice uniform C neck, uh, 10 inch radius across the fingerboard as well. Uh, all original frets, these are playing absolutely fine. I'll just show you the uh, top of the headstock there as well. Similar sort of tuners as what you get now, but slightly different. Again, you know, these are, you know, 35 years old and still working perfectly. And what I really like about them, which you don't get now, are these sort of ebony tuning keys, which again are in perfect condition. You know, you'd think they'd split, but note the very, very low serial number there at the top. If I can get that in a little bit closer for you. It's just so cool to see. And again, you know, really, really nice clean condition other than those sort of marks, but like I said, it's a it's a pretty old guitar. So, I think that takes us on to the switching then. So before we get on to the sounds, let me just tell you what they are, because uh, there'll be people out there watching this, I know, that know a lot about PRS, so you'll be familiar, but uh, there has been some changes as it goes over the years. So, basically, it started out, you had this switch here, which you might think is your pickup selector. It's just two preset tone controls called the sweet switch, and on is either your tone full up and off is a preset sort of, you know, perfect sweet spot with the tone dial back. And then this is what you might think is your tone control, is actually all your different pickup selectors and sounds and stuff like that. And with the aid of this piece of paper, which is the original user manual, I will tell you what those sounds are. And before I do that, I just want to show you something really cool. This piece of paper is four years older than me. <laughs> <laughs> and the, you know the ink on it is four years older than I am and it's got signs of its times here because you got where it says Gibson registered trademark uh, for Norlin which is obviously a sign of the time same with Fender uh, trademark of CBS because that's where Fender was at the time so it's just really cool to see stuff like that with, with an old guitar but pretty much as the as the switches go you, you're in your, your normal position that is just an ordinary bridge humbucker sound when you click over to the next one, you have an out of phase sound. And remember, each one of these sounds then has two different sort of tone settings per sound as well. Um, you rotate it further and then you've gone on to both pickups. So think, you know, normal Les Paul middle position kind of sounds again with two different voicings. You move over one again and you get what they're calling, uh, and I quote, the Strat sound. Um, I quote again, identical to in between the treble and middle pickups on a Strat. And to be fair, I've always said that PRS, for me, have always got the closest to that sort of, you know, split coil, 
um, kind of sound. I don't know how they do it, but to this day, it's still one of the best split coils you'll hear. And I'll show you that in the sound examples there as well. Uh, the next one over to that then is just your full fat, um, you know, base humbucker or neck humbucker, as you would call it these days. And, and that's it. So it's, I can kind of see why it's not so common now to have your pickups on a rotary switch like that. But you know, I've only I've only been playing this guitar for an hour or two, and I'm kind of used to it already. It, it's quite natural in, in a weird sort of way, and overall, I'm just amazed at how little outside of that has changed. I mean, look at this bridge. Does that look familiar? It's pretty much exactly the same bridge you'll find today. You know, all these years later. Of course, same with the body shape. Pretty, pretty, you know, pretty similar machine edge you'll get nowadays as well. And let's have a look at these birds just before we go on to the sounds. You know, this is a trademark thing for PRS now, of course, but they're just perfect. You know, all these years later, and they're just absolutely perfect. You've got the abalone with these sort of ebony-like outline of them. Absolutely nailed it, to be fair. And they're still, like I said, exactly the same today. And it's just super, super cool. So I'm going to go over the sounds now. Um, and then I'll come back and show you some of the other paperwork and um, we'll finish with the, the outro or the second solo to uh, Comfortably Numb played by Steve as well. His links are down below and uh, I'll see you in a second. So you heard the sounds of the guitar just then. I just want to show you some of its other uh, bits of paperwork that it comes with because it's just cool to see it. You know, back in the day, this is what you would have got with your new PRS. You got the limited warranty, all the information there, and then some extra, extra case candy stuff. And then this is the patent for the bridge, which again, like I said, is still used today. But it's just really cool. There's something about feeling a piece of paper that's originally with something that you know is older than you are. There's just something like novel about it, and it's it's great that it's still with the guitar. I suppose the only other thing to say really about it is uh, weight-wise, it's around the sort of eight and a half pounds, so it's not uber light. But again, you know, you got to think at the time Gibsons were known for making very very heavy Les Paul, so this thing probably felt uh, quite light in all fairness. Um, there's probably a few things I've missed out because, like I said, I know there's a few of you that watch that um, that are you know that are big PRS guys. So comment down below what you think of this guitar. It will be linked down below. It is available now, and um, I will see you all on another video.